Hey guys! I'm running out of intro ideas, so start sending those back to me! I don't know what to do! Uh, oh no, you did! Hajime! So, I got back from Mount Sac, feeling pretty good and really excited to try um, a bunch of new stuff, but... I didn't have the opportunity to practice at all, except for one day, so I had an acceleration day on Monday and left for the Drake Relays on Tuesday. Here's no game. Let's see how many songs I can fit in. I'll try to keep a count. Because I always sing in the car. Boom! Gotta keep myself entertained. Okay, here we go. Boom. It's a systematic. It was about a four hour drive to Drake. The moment I got there, I went straight to the mall to drop off my poles and check out the setup. And I walked in and just started drooling. It was disgusting because it looked so incredibly awesome. Just a runway and a big pit in a mall. Let's cross that off my bucket list. Whoop! Jump in a mall. So I was pretty excited. That night, some of the meat promoters of the mall and Drake Relays uh, decided to take us out to dinner. Well, all the vaulters were there, like Kylie Hudson and Sylvia and Steve Lewis and Hollis and Mike Arnold and Jack Witt and me and Renault and who am I forgetting? Mary Saxer. Can't forget Mary Saxer because she will kill you. She'll poke your eyes out. She'll beat you up. She'll prank your mother. She'll give you a wet willy. She'll hit you so hard your grandfather will feel it. She'll tickle you to death. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, I feel like I'm forgetting somebody. Nope. April Center Bennett was at the ASICS meeting, so that was everybody. And so was Becky Holiday. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. I'm gonna get this off my chest. Uh, so, I always feel weird filming people, because I feel weird filming myself. I'm always, like, paranoid that there's hairs on my hat, because that one vlog is gonna destroy me. Uh, I always feel weird about filming people, and you guys keep saying, You gotta film the elites, film the elites, get some inter interviews with the elites, you gotta film the elites! I walk up and, uh, you know, I, I film the table, and I can just tell everyone's looking at me like, what do we do now that we're on camera? I don't know how to act. So that's why. So I will try and do a better job at asking them. Or maybe if they watch these, they can just say, Hey, I feel okay being filmed. Film me all you want. I think people feel weird when I do that. I don't feel weird at all. I feel totally weird. Yeah, everywhere. I have to. You have to. Because now it's expected, really. <laughs> but, uh, long story short, I had the GoPro with me, and I talked Mark Hollis into buying the new GoPro. Mm, I win. So, we went to the mall. Here goes nothing. The runway was so fast. I 
don't know if it's fast because it was fast or it was fast because we're in a mall and there's a million people in there. Another little weird thing is as you lifted the pole, it would hit the second level. So if you had a really far runway, you either had to start with your pole down or you had to do a shorter approach. So that was kind of different. Uh, it felt like there was people on top of you because they were. They were on second story. Also, there were people like two feet from the runway. Which was awesome again! So cool! My step moved back a whole foot and a half, then it was the US Championships. I'm just running so fast! And then the meet started, so here we go. Ready to go? Ready to go! Yeah! Yeah. <laughs> so I gave my mom the GoPro, but she's never used a GoPro in her entire life. And while they were interviewing all the vaulters, she had the GoPro facing the wrong way. So she filmed herself for about four minutes, not even realizing it. <laughs> okay, so I just realized I did that whole taping with the camera facing me. Sorry, Sean. Another few interesting facts as it was in a team format. So you were paired up with a, a female vaulter. And your heights combined were the people who won the meet. So uh, I was I was paired up with Sylvia, which was awesome because she was seated the highest girl vaulter in there, probably because I was more at the bottom of the list. <laughs> the only hard part with that was she didn't speak uh, much English. So we were trying to do like sign language the whole time. You, good, me and you, team. Yay! Second thing that was cool is if you guys ever watch WWF Wrestling, all those wrestlers have theme music they got to play. So we got to pick our own theme music. And I picked the Racketeurs Salute Your Solution. Because it's awesome and gets me jacked up and it's on every single playlist I own. Um, they were, everyone else was trying to like pick a selfie. <laughs> or Jack Witt got whooped, there it is I think. I'm sexy and I know it, and all sorts of other weird stuff. It was pretty fun. So anytime you were up on the runway, they would play your song, and as you would start running, halfway down the runway, they would just crank it to 11, and it was just loud. So here's how my meet went. So I came in at 521, which is like 17-1, or somewhere around there. The first jump, I was just way under, because I was running so fast. So second attempt, I moved back about six inches, still under, but blew through that pole, but made it. So woo, we're off to a good start. went up to 537 which is like 177 uh the first attempt since I, w I went up a pole since i blew through on the last one the sands were 80 i was still another six inches to a foot under and so i moved back six more and then i was still under so i moved back six more so i'm gonna move i've already moved back like a foot and a half i'm gonna move back six more and see what happens and it was the third attempt and everyone was clapping and cheering and I still took off under. Here's where my mid was, here's where it was supposed to be, and I stuttered into my takeoff on the biggest pole I've been on all year, and still put up a pretty good attempt at 17.7. Well, I mean, I didn't realize it was that big until I saw the video, so that got me really excited. So, long story short, my run was just faster than my brain was ready for, which is a good problem to have, and I just can't wait until it all starts to come together. So, my partner Sylvia won the women's side. <laughs> No, the world record holder, Lovelini, Lovelini. I would say his name wrong. Um, let's call him Renault. Renault won the meet. Yeah. At 18.8, And Steve Lewis and Kylie Hudson won the team. So they actually won the whole thing and got the prize money and the giant 
uh, Happy Gilmore checks. So that was pretty cool. One of my favorite parts after was after the meet, and I got to meet all the fans and people who just wanted to like shake your hand, give you a high five, you know, sign some shirts. Um, we got to hang out with the Special Olympics uh, athletes who are insane. Um, they were telling me how, like, one guy was telling me how he runs the 800 and like the 400 and the like 400 hurdles, and I told him his events are way scarier than the pole vault because they are, and he just laughed at me and goes. Are you kidding me, man? If I'm on a stick going over another stick, that is way scarier. That was my favorite part. So thanks for everyone who came out. And those few people who had Team Hoot shirts on, you were the best looking people in the entire crowd. Just saying. Best dressed by far. So when the meet was over, I was surprisingly upbeat for having such a poor result. 17-1 a few months ago would have just destroyed me probably for two weeks. He's like, what am I doing? Ah! In all reality, if I looked at the potential that came out of the mid, the hip height was so big for stuttering at takeoff and being way under on my mid. More potential is that I can't believe how fast I was running. Just way too fast for the technique. And as Steve and Caroline have always said, and it's always in the back of my head now, that speed is the enemy of technique, but speed is what makes you vault higher. You gotta just keep playing. And it was the most fun meet I think I've ever been to in my entire life. And I hope they invite me back next year because I loved it. It was so much fun. And I even got a little donation from Jan and the gang at the Drake Relays. Unexpected, they just were like, Hey, we loved watching your son. Um, here's just a little something uh, to let him keep doing what he's doing. Not expected, and I just want to thank you so much because it just helps me continue to keep doing this. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Are we in the block? Who wants to be in the block? <laughs> you can make the vlog. What? You gotta make I the vlog. That was the video when you ran around. Around. I did that last time. You gotta make the vlog. <laughs> yeah. If you don't want to be in, just be like, edit this out. My mom is crazy. That's why it's like a Guys, sit together. So I've been jumping at Drake since college, and I just love this place. It feels like home. Uh, the officials are the nicest officials I've ever meet, met in the world, and they remember me from college. Hey, Sean, I think you've been coming here for 20 years. Like, I think I have two, but I'm not that old. The crowd is just one of the best track and field crowds in the entire world. I just love the Drake Relays. But the thing with the Drake Relays is you never know what you are going to get. You might get a headwind. You might get a tailwind. You might get rain. A crosswind. You might get another crosswind. You might get snow. You might get rain. It might be too hot. It might be too cold. There might be an apocalypse going. You just never know what you're going to get at Drake. You might have a five mile an hour tailwind or a 70 mile an hour hurricane tailwind. Or it could be coming in your face. You just never know and I've had a little bit of everything. At this meet, we had a 20 mile an hour tail crosswind and I've jumped in the only place I've never jumped at Drake and the official said this was the first time it's ever even been set up over there. So I would like to say I've jumped every direction in Drake. I don't know who can say that, but I know I can. Yeah! Here's how the meet went. So the 20 mile an hour tailwind wasn't too bad for me. Because I'm from Fargo, North Dakota, Minnesota, and we're used to that kind of shenanigans. But if it hits you at a cross anywhere on the runway, you felt like you were going to tip over. So the warm-ups didn't go well for just about anybody. I came in at 5.30, cleared that on my first attempt, and it was a little bit of a blow-through. Um, and the whole time while we were coming in the runway, we were just running so fast because of that tailwind. We were all just kind of leaning back a little bit. And yeah, but cleared it. So that helped and was nice. At 5.50, my first attempt was a big blow through on that pole. Went up a pole, got a little crosswind and... And then my third attempt, I got a tailwind but still had a... But halfway down the runway, I got a crosswind. So then as my step was supposed to be right on or maybe under a little bit, it was really far out. So as I hit it, the standards were in the wrong spot, and I brushed it on the way down. It's because they were a little deep, but, but uh, didn't brush it hard enough to knock it down. So the bar stayed up, and I jumped 550 for my outdoor PR. Come on. Third attempt. Right here. Which I know I can jump way higher, so it doesn't. I wasn't like super excited it was an outdoor PR, but hey, it was an outdoor PR, and it was a Drake PR, 
and it was a crosswind PR. Then at 560, the first jump was a blow through, and then the next two jumps were just those really hard, crazy crosswinds again. And that's Drake, but I love it anyways. I don't even care. It was so much fun, and I got to jump with the world record holder, and Steve Lewis, and Witt, and Hollis, and Mike Arnold, and Jordan Scott, and I got to meet all these guys, and we'll see where that takes me from there. So that's Drake. I love Drake. I'm gonna say it two more times. I love Drake. I really love Drake. So, like always, please subscribe. I will blow into this owl's butt if you subscribe to me. Also, follow me on social media. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Um, if you want a shirt, I have a few left. So, let me know. I will send those out to you. All the information is in the description. And I will check PayPal before I leave uh, for North Dakota State this weekend. Oh, That's my phone. Phone just went off. But uh, yeah, the next vlog will be the American Track League vlog, which I'm pretty pumped to tell you about. And I never know how to end these. The story of Jen Schur, and I'm not going to be able to tell it the way it happened, so I'll let Jeff Cooper tell you the story. Alright, okay, well, first of all, we're talking with Jacob, and, um, okay, so here's what happened. So, 463, first attempt, she runs down and she puts her foot right on the metal part of one of the boxes in the middle of the runway, and it slips out, and Hart, me and Hartwig are sitting next to each other, and we're like, what the hell, like, halfway through the runway, through the run. And then she was like, I stepped on, and Rick loses his mind. He said that there was um, supposed to be duct tape down, and there wasn't, and so they're like, get the duct tape down, get the duct tape down. On our second attempt, they're like, we're about to start the opening ceremony. They have fireworks set up in a circle around the infield in the shape of a track. Starts running, they start firing off at the start line of the 100 meters. She's running down the runway, and they catch up with her, and they're like, <laughs> right next to her, like cannons and smoke and the whole deal. Rick, sir, is already like, what the hell? And so she misses, and he's just like, Jen, there's nothing you can do. There's shooting stuff that you do in the middle of the runway. And so then she misses again on her third, but they give her a fourth, and she like sneaks over it. And then at 73, she's just like, she just was out of it. <laughs> yeah, for real.